Welcome to Tabernacle United Methodist Church's online worship. We pray that this time may be a blessing to your soul. In the description below, uh, you will find a link to Western North Carolina Annual Conference online giving portal. If you prefer to mail a check, uh, our mailing address is there also. We are grateful for your support of our ministries in Black Mountain and Asheville. Let us pray. O oh God of all creation, we come to you with humble hearts, confessing the ways in which we have failed to be your disciples. Grant us grace in you that we may learn from your wisdom and live as your children. Open us now, heart, mind, and soul, to the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today comes from the first letter of Peter, chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Several years ago, I took a course on theology of mission with Dr. Peter Kuzmich. Dr. Kuzmich is a native Slovenian, the son of a Pentecostal preacher father, raised in Yugoslavia, he went to seminary at Wheaton College, founded a relief agency during the Balkan War, and was asked to be the UN ambassador for Croatia. Rather than enter politics or diplomacy, Dr. Kuzmich chose to continue to work at the seminary he founded in the former Yugoslavia, and later also taught at Gordon-Conwell Theological School, where I took his class. This class was a doctoral seminar, and there were only two other students, my classmates from Boston University, Travis and Gunchiol. Late in the semester, Dr. Kuzmich invited us to join him at the Overseas Ministries Study Center, which is a center for study and respite for missionaries and their families. We decided to drive from Boston to New Haven together and I think I volunteered to be the driver. I picked up Travis and Gunchiol, and then we drove to the train station to pick up Dr. Kuzmich, and off we went. It's just two hours, a little more, by car, um, depending on the traffic, and I don't remember anything about the traffic. 
I'd never been in a car for such a long period of time with a professor before, and I was nervous until Dr. Kuzmich announced that our conversation would be like an oral final exam. And then I was really nervous. Travis and Gun Sheol could at least access their backpacks and their books, but my hands were on the wheel and all I had was my brain to go on. And he asked a question that surprised me about church membership. Travis had spent several years as a missionary in Cameroon. Gun Sheol had grown up in South Korea as the, the uh, pastor of a Presbyterian congregation there. And you've just heard Dr. Kuzmich's background. I was the only one in the car who was completely immersed in the culture of the United States. So his question was directed to me alone. He wanted me to explain why it was that Billy Graham lived in North Carolina, but was a member of a church in Texas. Now here's where I confess to you that I didn't know Billy Graham lived in North Carolina, nor did I know that he had his membership at a church in Texas. Being part of an, the evangelical church structure, Dr. Kuzmich knew these details. Being a United Methodist my entire life, I did not. I gave an answer that I no longer remember, but we all ended up discussing concepts of church and membership and mission, the culture of the United States, all of this for the rest of our road trip. The next morning, we three students sat in on Dr. Kuzmich's lecture, the gospel of peace at work in a world of conflict. We listened each from our context and experience to a room full of missionaries, each sharing their context and experiences of sharing the gospel in places of conflict and violence. I share that story with you because it comes to my mind when I read 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. That experience was, for me, a time of longing for pure spiritual milk. I had already tasted that the Lord is good through all my years in Sunday school, children's choir, youth group, but this was an experience of drinking deeply from the well, of growing thoughtfully, challenged into a deeper understanding of salvation. And this was not an individual experience, but one that was shared with so many other people who were also longing for a deeper understanding of salvation longing to be built into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Though I would spend a few more weeks with Dr. Kuzmich and other classes with Travis and Gun Sheol, I never spent time with the missionaries that were in that lecture room again. It's a little bit of an echo of the question of Billy Graham's church membership how is it that I experienced that discussion and lecture as being built into a spiritual house with people that I don't sit with each Sunday? This is part of what so many faithful church members and pastors are pondering these days as we wait until it is safe to sit side by side in the sanctuary again. How do we understand what it looks like to be the church? 
How do we understand what it means to be built into a spiritual house? These are spiritual questions. And once you start examining these questions, you soon realize that there are practical questions to consider as well. It may be possible to live in one place and keep your church membership in another, but how does that impact the financial stability of small local churches? How does that impact the ability of small local churches to sustain mission and outreach in their communities? These are the kinds of questions I know a lot of people are thinking about lately. We're trying to find our way faithfully into a fresh understanding of what it means to be a holy priesthood, people being built into a spiritual house, and how to hold on to hope for our local congregations through these difficult days. The illustration of Billy Graham highlights both the spiritual and practical questions. Financial support of a local church is a practical matter. Contributing to the ongoing work of a local church in its community. Tithing is a spiritual matter. How is God calling you to offer your gifts for the work of the mission of the whole church. My professor asked about Reverend Graham's membership because for him it made sense that both practical and spiritual matters happen in a particular location. But Reverend Graham had the experience of networking with local churches for his events. He would arrange for local pastors to pray with the people who came forward at his events so that the people would have a local church to connect with, so that they could have a fellowship in which to find that pure spiritual milk and be built into a spiritual house. He knew that people needed to connect with other believers to develop trust in the work of the Spirit so they could come to Christ who is a living stone, not an unmoving stone, but a living stone. Christ is risen, alive with God, calling us each day to keep learning, keep praying, keep listening, keep being made into disciples. In a fellowship, we encourage each other to do those things that form us as disciples, and we pray for each other. All those missionaries in that class had experienced being formed in a fellowship like that and talked about the necessity of prayer for their ongoing work and formation. Prayers of the faithful in our fellowships help us to come to know the mercy we have received from God and how to share that mercy with others. Prayer is an essential aspect of being formed into a spiritual house, a royal priesthood. Reverend Graham knew this, and that's why he connected people to local churches. But he also used the technology available to him to adapt his outreach beyond in-person events. All those missionaries and my missionary classmates knew that to be formed as a disciple, to share the gospel in word and in action, you must be part of a fellowship. Tithing and praying support the work of local churches and they help to sustain fellowships that contribute to people being formed into a holy priesthood in the future, beyond our own interaction with a local church. The challenge of our time is understanding how we are a local church that can use technology to reach others. We, too, can adapt and use technology to share the mercy we have received from God. 
We may long for a return to the comfort of what we've always known as church, but there are blessings with opening to new ways of being church. We can use online meeting programs to have Bible studies. We can share prayer requests or joys through social media. Our annual conference has set up a way for people to make donations online to equip our congregation's local outreach. We might be able to connect with people from other places and mutually benefit from being built into a royal priesthood, even though we don't sit next to each other. A small example. I know a United Methodist deacon who lives about an hour and a half away from where I live. He invited me to an online writing group. A few are in North Carolina, one is in Missouri, one Illinois, one in Texas. Twice a week we gather, spend a little time catching up with each other, getting to know each other, and then we share what we plan to work on. An hour later, we check back in, asking each other how the writing went. Now this seems small, but the encouragement of people I've only just met has really helped me. This group of Christians welcomed me into their circle, and together we are being formed into a spiritual house. I may never meet some of them in person, and that's okay. It's a new way of connecting, encouraging, and supporting each other. This gift is the mercy of God mediated through new technology. So I want to leave you with this encouragement today. Even as we long for a return to our familiar ways of gathering, be open to the Spirit moving, calling us to new opportunities of being formed into God's holy priesthood. As you pray, let others know, even a brief word, and I've been praying for you, can be an encouragement that helps another person grow spiritually. Keep your hearts open to using technology in new ways to help us be the church in new ways. It may not be comfortable or easy at first, but it can be a blessing. May the Spirit guide you as you seek to be formed into God's holy people, a holy priesthood sharing God's mercy with all. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for your love that spans the oceans, the love that welcomes us home, and makes us your people. We thank you for the mercy you have shown to all those who are working to heal those who are ill and suffering, for the patience and strength you have given to those persons working to relieve hunger and worry. Hear our prayers for all those we know who are struggling, who need your comfort, Grant us courage as we seek to be built into your spiritual house and bring us safely to the morning where we can serve you again. In Christ's name, amen. Receive this benediction. Strengthened by the breath of the Spirit, resting in the peace of Christ, joyful in the salvation of God, May you be a witness to grace and mercy this day and forevermore. Amen.